Good evening, this is Dr. Bill White again with the American Orthodontic Society and I uh, hope you'll join the American Orthodontic Society. You can be a member wherever you are in the world. So we're going to try to get to, to where you can take these webinars and take courses in various places. Uh, anyway, to get back to this case we have here, we had a young lady come in with an impacted cuspid was down in the chin laying flat down like that. I'd never seen one like that. And I'm going to try to show several impacted teeth to give you some idea of how they are, the variety of these uh, impacted teeth. So uh, without any further uh, talking, let's get on with the case. Uh, here is the young lady, and you don't notice a thing in the world, but there's a cuspid laying down right in here in the, the chin. Uh, it'll show up on the x-ray uh, right here, and and what we, what happened, the space closed up, and it left the bite closed down. It was class one on the sides, and then it, it had a deep bite. And to be class one, and to have a deep bite, you've got to have a lot of crowding in the teeth. Well, this one, the whole tooth was gone, and so it, these teeth kind of folded up, and we got a real deep bite case here, and uh, we must have had some TMJ problem because I took a, a transcranial x-rays, and we don't do that unless they've got a TMJ problem, but we opened the bite, and then we expanded the area for the cusp. Let me get on down in the case, and we'll show it. It won't, t it won't take us too long. A real nice looking young lady and you don't see a thing uh, in the shape of the face with her mouth closed too. But when she smiles, you can see she's got a class 2, kind of a class 2 division 2 type case. And uh, you can look at the teeth right here and see you hardly see the lower anterior teeth. I mean they're up under here. And then they're up in the roof of the mouth. I'm going to show you a picture on the model from the other side. Now she had this uh, decalcification or something here that happened way before we saw her. I don't know whether she just left uh, food around the tops of those teeth or not. But anyway... Uh, that's d discolored, and you're going to see they have to do a bridge, and they'll put this discoloring in the bridge, too, uh, when they finish it. Uh, and the cuspid is down in this area. See. Now, let's go on to some other pictures here. On the side, it's a beautiful class one. Uh, in the molar and the bicuspids and even the cuspid and then on the left side now this uh, missing tooth is on the right side and so the closure is more on the right, right side so it's a definite class 2 division 2 they see the centrals out here and the lateral erupted in uh, past the central and now the lower jaw can't come forward and it's got the condyle pressed up against this retrodiscal tissue back here. And apparently it's this giving some trouble. And <coughs> you got to get this bite open. If you open the bite, then you can bring these teeth forward and open that space. And that's what we did. And that brings the jaw forward up here and doesn't press back on the retrodiscal tissue and your TMJ problem goes away. And now it is idiotic to think that orthodontics and dentistry, and I don't care what kind of dentist you are, you should understand what causes this pain. Uh, uh, this is the main cause for it. The 
pressing of the condyle back up against the uh, retrodiscal tissue. Now everybody's got stress and strain and stuff like that and that causes them to clench their teeth a lot of times and that adds to it. Uh, but And they can have this without the pressing the condyle back here but it's pretty rare. Most of them you can open the bite and bring their jaw will just move forward and that will relieve the jaw pain that they're in. Let's go ahead now and show you the other side of the mouth. Now the cuspid is missing on this side over here and so these teeth are together and they have erupted way up in the mouth. I'll show you uh, that picture I said in just a, a little bit here. And there's the teeth. Now you see the uh, teeth over here on this side of the mouth. Uh, here's the cuspid. Here or here, uh, not the cuspid, but this looks like a cuspid. It's kind of uh, like something in there. But as we go back across, uh, I'm I'm sorry. This is not the. This is a cuspid. We're missing uh, this area over here. Let me uh, get on now to another picture, and you see the the space on the. Well, it's a lower cuspid right here on the right side of the mouth that is missing, and so these teeth have all moved over in this direction, and that allowed some space in here and they didn't have anything to contact so they over erupted i had this mixed up a, a minute ago on there uh, so anyway we go in and now we're going to open this space right in here but you've got to you can't open it with it jammed up against the upper anterior teeth uh, you saw how they closed in there but if you open the bite, now you can open this space right here and then put a bridge in this area right there eventually. Now if you had implants, you could put them in there too. Uh, I don't know what happened at this time of the uh, We didn't uh, do very many implants back then. And today it would be different. I would rather put an implant in there if you didn't run into the cuspid which is laying down in here somewhere we'd have to see uh, you'd have to miss the uh, the impacted cuspid now there is a danger in leaving that tooth in and i talked to the people that they could have gone to an old surgeon and he'd had to go in through the chin of uh, the bone structure there in the chin to get to this tooth this cuspid but it could have been removed. But they decided just to leave it because it wasn't, at this point, wasn't doing anything. But when you have an impacted cuspid, you can form a follicular cyst around the crown where this is epithelial tissue. And if it starts swelling, uh, it can just get bigger and bigger and bigger. I had a case in Africa where the a policeman came into my office over there and had a cyst in his jaw as big as a hen egg. I'm not stretching it too much. <laughs> uh, and it was just a huge uh, place. And I opened it up and drained it, of course. And then I packed uh, out of form gauze in there. And he would come in every few days and we'd repack it. And the the cyst just shrunk down to almost nothing. By just keeping it open, uh, the cyst will shrink. And so that's what we did in that case. So I told these people for every, uh, that every year or so you should have an x-ray made and see that cuspid and make sure there wasn't a follicular cyst for it. For it'll get so big, it'll just... Uh, spread all over the place there it could so <clears throat> probably never get as big as that one in Africa and then I saw one guy that his whole jaw was a cyst and the teeth were hanging down in it like these uh, 
stalactites or whatever it is and claves that hang down. It looked, uh, had a little hole in there, could see it. Uh, and I didn't get to treat him. But the guy didn't speak English and he, he left and never came back again. But that's, we would have kept that open. It would have shrunk up, uh, quite a bit, I'm sure. All right, you can see where that tooth's missing. And you see those teeth have, the lower anterior teeth have over erupted tremendously. And I'll show that to you. You can see a little on this self. Now, looking at the self, you just see a little spot right in there. But that is a cuspid tooth, and we'll we'll see it on some other x-rays here shortly. And this was 1989. Now here is, by this tooth being gone, these teeth went pulled back, had nothing to hit, so they over-erupted up to here. Whereas this is pretty normal on both sides of the mouth but that's it's interesting to know so these uh, several cases we'll show with impactions and show how they affected the development of the mouth and everything so anyway she had some joint problem and we took a transcranial x-ray and where uh, they would bite and everything and they, this is the condyle right in here and you can see it and where it goes back and presses into this area back here and this synovial fluid the retrodiscal tissue is up in this area and the condyle will stay further off you wanted to have plenty of space back in here now when we lowered these anterior teeth we brought them down then the jaw could move forward to some extent and it moved forward enough to get this off of that tissue and your pain goes away. So if you do anything to shove that back, you can create a TMJ problem for somebody. Okay, here is the panorex now and you can see the where the tooth is missing right in here. And this is a lateral and that's a bicuspid. And here is, now I took this uh, old trap panorex, but it's really good. And it looks like you got more lower centrals than, than you do actually have. And this is that cuspid. It looks long in here, but it's not. Uh, the cuspid is laying right down in here. And you can see it. The cortical bone is right there over it. Uh, right, right under, excuse me, and uh, that's what we're going to leave in and do this. So we're going to come in and open this and open it over here and get a room in there and we came in and bridge. Uh, I did, I sent her back to her dentist and we had a bridge that area in. All right, let's get on with this. Uh, now there we've got it where we've opened the bite and we've got a spring pressing on that to uh, expand that and you can still see that cuspid down on the bottom. Now I was all, I was thinking of having that tooth out but uh, she didn't want to and the family didn't want to really so I just told them I don't think it'll bother anything as long as it doesn't develop a cyst but you should watch this thing as long as it's there, it can f start forming a cyst. If you get any swelling, anything down here, go have it looked at. Uh, that can happen. You have a follicular cyst around that follicle around the crown. And uh, I've seen them do some uh, really bad things. Now we've opened the bite. You see the lower teeth are up just a little past. So we've got enough forward you go out here and you bite your front teeth together and your back teeth don't hit in other words the pressure is here on the front teeth and back up here on the condyle and these teeth don't hit uh, and that's why you can't bite real hard normally on your front teeth 
because the load is on the joint here. Now, if it's a life or death situation, you can uh, bite pretty hard with that. Uh, now your best biting area is back in here where the muscles are. You've got a lot more pressure. Uh, uh, just touch on that while we're at it. Uh, now we see we've opened the bite and we've leveled it. And here, here this, this is a bridge that was put in back in 90, 1991, uh, for her. And, uh, it's uh, the bridge both uh, both teeth. The lateral that was there was pretty uh, hefty lateral, and so we put the bridge from the uh, bicuspid to the lateral right there. And uh, here's the area. Now we'll look back in the mouth, and we've opened it, and we've got this space ready for that. That's a little wedge to rotate this too where it was pulled up it rotated back this way and we put that little wedge to pull it back and straighten it out there and that's the kind of way we rotate these single brackets and you've got a lot more inner bracket space and so the ladies that worked in the office like those they didn't even use the ones with the wings to help rotate them uh, I think if you were just starting out everything, you better get the ones with the wings because you can rotate so much better. And we put this upper retainer in, and it, it is a wraparound retainer. It has no wires crossing the occlusal surface of the teeth. And you can make them where they stay in. And so it's far better to use a, a retainer like that. You put a bite plate on it and I'll show you the retainer in a minute and it won't let this deepen as long as that is in there in the lower teeth you see the little tracks of the lower teeth right in this area now every deep bite I've ever messed with tries to deepen again so if you leave the retainer out the bite will come down to some extent you put it back in and then then you're hitting out here and back on those condyles back there. And that's why people put their retainer back in. We've left it out a week or two or three. And their uh, teeth start hurting. Their, their, their heat teeth, their jaw joints start hurting. And it's because that uh, the teeth have over erupted. And then they're hitting up here and the bite plate is down here. And the, the teeth are coming out, so if that happens to you, you'll know what what is taking place. Uh, now let's get on with it. Here, there's the space is big enough, and we've opened it up, and you can't tell any difference in the facial structure now, except she has a little more vertical height of the face than she did, uh, simply by opening and intruding those lower anterior teeth and the upper anterior teeth and here's the profile after we got through with all that now there is where the teeth were and that's them now <laughs> and the center line is pretty well lined up and you see they put a bridge here and kind of put some of this shows that uh, decalcification on the bridge so it looks more normal. The shade isn't quite uh, correct in there, but it's some lab person made it, I guess. Uh, now, you can see where the upper teeth are way over this, and that they hit the upper teeth and shoved this back to some extent. And uh, you open this now, and the jaw can come forward a little bit, but it won't be much because of where these teeth uh, meet right in here, see. But they they can move forward uh, sometimes just a millimeter or so will stop the uh, pain there. So here are the teeth where they fit, and that's the bridge we put in there. And this is the other side. And now it's open, and that's almost perfect uh, class uh, one. And now 
here's the upper arch in here and uh, I was trying to show the tooth missing up here. It wasn't the upper one, it was the lower one. And I'm sorry. Uh, and here is the upper arch after we leveled it out and everything. And this is the lower arch and there's where the, the tooth was missing. And now here is the, let me get this out of the way. Now that's got the bridge in it. It's not the prettiest bridge in the world, but uh, anyway, it, it's functioning good. And she stopped having the discomfort in the jaw or the pain up there. And that's the end of it. And uh, thank you for watching. And you can learn something from each one of these. I try to pick out cases that we treated that have some meaning to them that you can learn something from that if you uh and i spend more time on them than i should i'm sure this has been a little over 21 minutes so i'm gonna hush and uh hope you'll subscribe to our channel and uh, i'll see you later hopefully so i'm gonna close out and i'll sign out